Не горы Каратак. Очень большая гора. Серьезно, я бы так сказал. Daniel Davidenko is a young nature lover. Once, while he was climbing a local hill, because he heard that there are some interesting uh, rock carvings over there, he started noticing suspiciously uniform patterns on the stone blocks. So let's try to find out together, are these regularly shaped blocks play of nature or are they heavily eroded ancient megalithic blocks? Let's start with the basics. How does the natural bedrock on that hill look like exactly? This is how it looks like, perfectly normal like every other rock except this uh, triangular small holes that don't look very natural because they are polished, he says, very smooth and of a uniform shape and he feels like as if a gigantic machinery got its claws on the rock. But no matter if uh, that is true or not, the main point is to see how the rock looks like and uh, how does it erode. Now, what we have in the area of the possible suspected megaliths, on, in the basis we have a normal looking bedrock like this section. And then on the top of it starts another type of stone which is layered. And not only it is layered, but it is cut in a very interesting manner. Now, many people assume that if indeed this was a building long time ago, it uh, should have a proper high-tech uh, fundament basis if uh, a civilization was that developed to build such gigantic megaliths, then people assume that uh, it should have put some high-tech uh, foundation. But um, such an expectation is very much unreasonable because if uh, we look at historic buildings, they were not doing that. Just on the contrary, they often made their megaliths blend with nature in such a manner that uh, it is not easy to find out where does the bedrock begin and where does the man-made uh, stonework starts. The Peruvian megaliths are uh, the best example for that. For example, here half of the walls are solid bedrock and on the top only they are building blocks. The main reason for which Daniel Davidenko is convinced that these are ruins of an ancient megalith are the smooth cuttings between the stone blocks. Let's see if they can occur naturally or not. Obviously these stones are of a layered structure and if we have a smooth horizontal cutting that wouldn't be surprising at all and could be considered as a naturally occurring thing. But what about the vertical cuttings? Those are suspicious. And all of them inside are very smooth, as if the stones are polished. Can this happen naturally? Now these are most probably naturally occurring layered stones from another location. I'm saying most probably because actually one never knows. Anything could have been 
once upon a time a ruins of a gigantic building. After all, we have so many proofs that the giants did live on our planet in the past and they had a civilization not just sleeping under the trees, so it would make sense that they built their own gigantic dwellings. That's why I'm saying most likely this is a natural one, but not 100% sure. So on this shot we do see a vertical cutting in the layered stone. We don't know is it smooth or not, I can't check. But even if it is, this doesn't mean that the perfectly rectangular blocks and many of them are formed with such cuttings. This is just an isolated case. One thing is to have one vertical crack and another thing is to have many scattered perfectly rectangular blocks as we are gonna see later on in this documentary. So let's see other examples of pancake rocks from all over the world. Here is one from New Zealand. Well, it is a rare formation. So in reality, we don't even know. This could be ruins of old megaliths as well. Just uh, look at them. We never know. And on the other hand, yes, we do see some sort of cuttings like here. But I don't really see any regular blocks lying around. Still we don't know. Another interesting example. Now here we have almost a block. But again, this is very isolated case. This could have been a megalith as well. We just don't know. It's only one or two. I browsed this uh, gallery here. All around the rocks are normal. It is uh, very, very small. It's not like a rule. So we reach nowhere because all we can say it is an exception and uh, we don't see any perfectly shaped blocks anywhere around. While on Karatak it more looks uh, like a construction site with these uh, huge bricks laying around. And it's not only their form, also on the side many tend to have uh, like a standard uh, places where the polygonal masonry would fit, like these ones. It's like a pattern on a great number of stones. Now this is how a typical building block or a chunk looks like, although most of them are layered, if we look carefully, that is uh, where they have been exposed to water. On the sides and lower parts that were more protected, these chunks are perfectly smooth. That is the main thing, that is the main point of Daniel. There is no geological process, or at least he on, and I have never heard of such a thing, Mother Nature producing this type of stone blocks, perfectly polished on the sides, and then stacking them next to each other. Many of them have elegant curves of this type, Some of them are rather large, reaching a length of over 4 meters.
And then we have rows of uh, identical size, so to say, star rays. And uh, Daniel Davidenko is suggesting that uh, this was a star fort, actually, maybe the original prototype of what would later on evolve as the Saxwerman generation and eventually to the star forts of the not so far recent past.
ровненько. Стоило подняться выше и забыл сильнейший, мощнейший. Are they absolutely really natural? Because the bedrock, the original bedrock is not at all like this. It is only on the megalithic-like formations that we see the tin layers. Was it somehow connected with the technique that was used to make the megaliths? Here we have graffiti, it is uh, barely over 70 years old and it is already so heavily eroded that the lowest part of them cannot be read. This really reminds me the research of uh, Fomenko where he makes the point that, uh, you know, since the time of photography we can uh, clearly make ourselves without the need of any penguin telling us that the stones erode much faster than the penguins tell us and this means that many many of the historic sites are much younger than uh, we are told so what was before in the magical times before that well maybe megaliths like this after all they were advanced beings no wonder if they were building this type of stone mansions 
I never understand the people who simply prefer to deny the possibilities of such sites being actual ruins of megaliths simply because they can't wrap their mind around it. I mean, after the countless proofs that there was a very advanced ancient civilizations and other races, it would be strange if we don't find such ruins and not that we find them because usually People tend to live in buildings, no? Did Daniel discover real ancient ruins of megaliths? Possibly, I cannot say for sure. It looks like a possibility only, for now. But if he really did, it is not by chance that the ancient spirits chose him exactly to find them because his spirit is strong. He is not afraid of the natural elements, actually he is learning how to control the elements with his consciousness. <laughs>